there we go. Um, for us, it would be really nice to um, have an idea. A lot of people, much more than we expected, registered for this uh, session. And um, it's very interesting for us. To a lesser extent for the uh, KU Leuven people, uh, professors and researchers, but for everybody who is um, thinking about applying for the scholarship or already applying, how you how you learned about it, where you where did you find uh, this opportunity, this call. So if it works, um, if possible, uh, you could go to uh, to the website. I think it's it's over here, uh, polev.com slash, and then it's my name. That's how it goes, 323. And um, then give us an answer to this question, if possible. How did you find out about the Global Minds PC scholarships? Um, we can take uh, a couple of minutes to do that. Normally, there is this uh, QR code uh, in the in the right upper corner uh, to take you to it faster um, and start filling in. Or if there is a problem, maybe you can ask in the chat. I'm thinking, can I share this link in the chat? That would be even better. I will do that. Up. There we go. Because this is always still a question for us. Uh, what is the best way to make sure that as many people as possible uh, hear about this opportunity? Um, so. Okay, I see there is not that much movement anymore. Um, can I ask perhaps somebody who said something else what that means? If there's anybody here uh, took that answer? Yes, it's very simple. It's Mark Misery here. I heard it from you guys at the KU Leuven International Office. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, that's why I said that this this survey was mostly for the um, uh, let's say the the applicants, the candidates. Um, but uh, that's that's a good one. Um, apart from that, any others? No. Yeah, Marion. Uh, I I got it from the alumni e email. Ah, okay, okay, that's great. Yeah, good to know. Thank you, thank you. All right, um, then we can uh, continue. Thank you very much for this. It helps. Uh, it's clear to see that. Um, uh, let's say the uh, how should I say it? Mouth to ear uh, publicity is the most important than uh, hearing from colleagues. Okay. Um, let's continue. Uh, I thought we could continue. Um, mm -hmm. But it doesn't. Okay. I will go to the next slide. Sorry, there's always something that needs to go wrong in these kind of things. Um, yeah, I think we're back. Um, the content of today's session. In the meantime, we're admitting people all the time. Um, a bit of the background about the scholarships uh, and the policy at KU Leuven that's related to it. Um, then the eligibility conditions to apply. Um, research topics, but more specifically also um, 
finding a promoter at KU Leuven, which is crucial, of course. Then the application procedure, how does it work? What are the selection criteria once you have applied? Um, what is included in the scholarship? And then some time for uh, Q&A um, for your questions. I will start with the background and policy, and that will be uh, explained by Laurens. Oh, thank you, Laurens. Too fast. Yep, no, no problem, Roland. So, as you know, KU Leuven really invests in uh, what we call nowadays global development. We think that cooperation with uh, young uh, researchers from the global south is essential for ourselves, obviously for our partners in that global south. And we have uh, quite a number of uh, instruments uh, available to do so, but really the key instrument are these uh, PhD scholarships. Um, you will find uh, many reasons why if you uh, have a read of our policy plans. The objectives of uh, the scholarship is uh, obviously the individual capacity strengthening of early career researchers, that's obvious. But we also want to go beyond and this is why you will see that in the selection criteria we add a few things um, and we aim for um, young people going back to the home institution or working in the home institution so that they can strengthen capacity at the broader level within their department. Ultimately, uh, this will result in a research network of this young person, obviously with Leuven connections, but beyond and international as well, which then uh, will lead to hopefully an academic career in which you attract autonomously new projects. Uh, we have about 20 of these scholarships uh, a year available, um, and we have three categories. So uh, there is one full-time uh, scholarship four years at KU Leuven. It's uh, funded by our own means, and that's the first category, PhD scholarships for researchers from the South. Today, as you all know, we will be speaking about the Global Minds program, which uh, deals with a sandwich type PhD scholarship as you will see. And then there is an other category, it's a bit smaller. It's funded by our honorary rector, Mike Verwenne, which offers scholarships uniquely for students from the DRC, so Congo, um, and it is based on short-term research stays, four stays during a period of four years. So that's uh, a bit where we are. Roland, back to you. Yeah, thank you, Lawrence. Um, then I will talk about the um, eligibility conditions. Maybe my colleagues can let people in that are waiting in the lobby. Uh, I see sometimes that there are people waiting. Okay, um, eligibility conditions. Um, there's a whole web page with all the details. Um, I've put quite some links in this presentation. Uh, we will share the presentation, of course. Uh, that you can use it later on as a guide. Um, the most important elements for eligibility, clearly that uh, an applicant needs to be a national and a resident of one of the Vlieruwes scholarship countries. You can uh, have a look um, at the link, what countries they are, but that is of course because the funding comes from uh, Vlieruwes and uh, we need to respect their guidelines. Um, Another important one, the latest master's degree that has been granted to the applicant um, should not date before 2014. So there's a 10 year, uh, let's say, uh, margin um, between the, the uh, master degree and the start of the PhD. Um, an academic grade that uh, should be equivalent to a high distinction or higher. This is a bit a bit fluid. Um, it is not that sharp. We have received questions about, okay, if, if I have this grade or that grade, am I eligible? Um, let's say this is uh, dealt with by our admissions office. Uh, they are experts in this and they will look at um, the entire uh, file that, um, that an applicant uh, sends in. Um, so we can't really say this this or this uh, exact grade or, or points because every country is different uh, in that way. And um, especially for these global mind species, there's quite some flexibility. Um, so you look at, let's say, an academic grade, uh, high distinction is around 80% 
Um, so maybe that's something you can you can look at, but it doesn't mean that you shouldn't apply um, if it's not exactly that. Um, what is very important, um, at least in the end, is that a candidate is formally affiliated to and also supported by a university in the home country, in one of the scholarship countries. And um, if you're not affiliated yet to this university, um, you can also upload a letter of intent. But what is important is that once, and we will discuss it further in detail, once um, we sign a contract, the idea is that you are um, a member of staff, a paid member of staff, uh, at your home institution. So during the times that you spend there, uh, you will be paid by your home university. Um, then um, this scholarship is not for students that are already enrolled as PD students at KU Leuven or that are or have been employed in the um, European economic area. Then the final an important condition and not an easy one in many cases is that you need a KU Leuven supervisor, a promoter, and you also need a supervisor at your home institution. Um, we will say a bit more about this later on, but um, it is a crucial element before you will be able to apply. Um, is there any questions about this? It's good to mention it now. Um, or, or later. I won't see if there are any hands, so maybe my colleagues can do that. Okay. Um, then about the research topics, so what do we expect these uh, PC proposals to be about? Okay, I see one hand, uh, Hassan, please do. Yeah, thank you so much for this brilliant uh, Station of information. Do you get me, please? Yes, 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 yes. Okay. My concern is about the previous slide when you mentioned, uh, yeah, the the candidate should be uh, paid by his home institution. I did not really get the, that part. Yeah. Um... We will say a bit more later on, but the the point is that the scholarship um, will pay for the period that you spent in Leuven, and that is only half of the uh, full four years. And the period that you're spending at your home institution, you are supposed to be uh, a member of staff receiving a salary from your home university. Um, the idea is that this creates, let's say, a shared ownership of uh, of the scholarship, but also increases the chances that after the PC you will have a good position at your home institution uh, or the opportunity to to continue your work there. Um, but we realize that this is a difficult thing and might need uh, some kind of negotiation, also some kind of discussion. So if at this point it is not already in place, you can also ask for to your home institution to um, to provide a kind of letter of intent saying like, okay, uh, if the scholarship is granted, we will make sure that for the four years of the scholarship, the period where the scholar is um, staying at our institution, at the home country, we will make sure that they have um, uh, a salary and the time to spend on, on the research. Is, is that clear? Apparently, Roland, there is a question in the chat, if you permit me, which yeah. is quite, quite complicated. So the question is, what if you are enrolled in another in an other institution apart from your employing institution? So let's say you have a split situation. One institution pays you, but you are really doing uh, your PhD courses or training in another institution. What would you say? Well, we will write, we will sign the contract with the institution that is paying you because that's a condition for this scholarship to be able to be granted. Um, then, of course, yeah, if you're, yeah, it, it, it may be a special situation if you're already doing a PC or, or being trained in a PC 
at another institution, we should have have a look at what kind of institution or or, or what the process looks like. Um, but the contract will be signed with the institution that pays your uh, salary while you are in the home country. Yeah. Yep. But I think we help? have some. Yeah, we have some precedents eh, of one institution and university that really employs you, pays you, but that at least segments of your uh, PhD courses are really at a research center or research institute that is affiliated, but not formally employing you. So we'll have to look into that question uh, deeper. So please, it's a question from Eric. Um, we will contact you uh, about this with more detail. Is that okay? Yeah. yeah. Right. It's it's possible. Um, okay. Um, and I carry on with and the research proposal and the content. Um, of course, it is expected to be original, innovative. It should be feasible because uh, the contract will cover um, forty-eight months, four years. And it is a sandwich setup that means that only a maximum of 24 months will be spent in Belgium. Um, and the rest will be spent in the home country. So we're looking at in your proposal, it also needs to make sense. Uh, very often people will do um, field work or surveys or any kind of uh, collecting samples uh, in their home country. Um, then bring them back here. It's also it is flexible how you organize or divide or plan these um, 24 months in Belgium. But uh, it's good to know that there are four return tickets, plane tickets uh, provided by the program. So very often people organize it in four uh, maximum of four blocks. Um, and then of course. Um, the proposal should also be related to global sustainable development uh, and then the sustainable development goals are good guidelines um, we will see later on in the in the documents that we ask for what is the relevance of your research uh, how, how will it be able to make a difference for people and then referring to the sustainable development goals can be very useful um, what is maybe a more more of an issue for a lot of people interested in the PEC scholarship is uh, finding a supervisor or promoter at KU Leuven. Um, this, if you really uh, you don't know anybody yet uh, who would be working on your topic and you want to out of the blue contact them, it's possible. Um, we have uh, I put a link there the research portal where you can actually look through search in. Um, with a search term or different terms um, in the research projects that are ongoing or have been uh, done at KU Leuven. And in that way, you can quite easily find uh, some professors that work on your topic. You can then have a look further at the who is who, uh, look at their name and also find um, the way to contact them. Another way is to contact us and then Laurens in the first place uh, to help you find someone. Uh, this is someone something we can do. It's not always easy if we get a lot of uh, requests. Um, it's definitely not easy if the request is very broad or very vague. You need to be as specific as possible um, because there are a lot of professors at KU Leuven. Also, keep in mind, please, um, our professors get these kind of questions uh, quite often regularly as yeah? some People say even daily, and they need to choose. They can't support everybody, um, so it's also yeah, advice to present yourself very well. Try to already write um, something, uh, a, a bit of a draft of what you want to do, what your experience is, um, to also make it uh, make it in interesting and feasible for them. Um, what I will say at the very end of this. Uh, session is uh, there will be another call next year if you're looking at this now um, it's quite a process to apply and you feel okay this won't be feasible then try to contact someone for next year and uh, try to get to know each other because it's well really important uh, that you also uh, know each other a bit that you can trust each other and work together because it's an intensive process um, of at least four years huh, when you start doing this 
All right, um, application procedure. It's a bit complicated. It's a two-step procedure. This depends on, yeah, um, let's say the KU Leuven and all its internal functionings. But there is one deadline, one final deadline, and that is uh, 22nd of February uh, at 5 p.m. Uh, that's Greenwich Mean Time. Okay, um, so it's almost Belgian time. Um, so the first step, applying for admission to, let's say, the KU Leuven doctoral training. Uh, you will see this title here. It's also a link with some more um, information about how that works. Um, so you need to be admitted to KU Leuven doctoral training uh, in the same sense as any, any PhD candidate needs to be admitted. Um, and to do that, um, the HR delegate of your promoter needs to create a link, needs to give you access to the web application. So for this, you need to talk to your promoter, ask them who is that. Sometimes they don't know um, and they will need to ask their departmental manager or anybody close to them um, who that is. And this person, this HR delegate, can then open up a link for you uh, to start working on. Then you will upload documents, provide information, uh, you will see. Uh, it will be, for example, a scan of your diploma, um, all these kind of things, your CV. Then we have a special department, the admissions office. They will screen this and send the file on to every faculty has a doctoral committee. And the doctoral committee will look at it, look at your application and say, OK, um, you will get a green light um, to start a doctoral training at KU Leuven or no, this uh, this will not to now um, keep in mind, that's why I put the start now here. Um, this doctoral committee doesn't convene every week. Uh, in many cases, it's a monthly meeting. And uh, you need this green light to be able to uh, submit your application uh, before uh, the 22nd of February. Um, all right. As that is the first step, I hope that is very clear. Um, the second step is about, let's say, the content, uh, the value of your um, of your application. Um, when applying, uh, you will need to send in CVs, bibliography if you've had any um, publication. Then the main document is the research proposal. The link, the first link here is to the document uh, where you can download it. Um, this one is for me to be able to show it to you. Uh, can you see this or no? No? Okay. Problem. I will just share my screen, will make it easier. Okay. Now you can see it, I think. Um, so this is what the research proposal looks like. Um, some general data, the outline, a timeline, because this this um, Centrish scholarship it makes it a bit uh, more specific. It needs to make sense. Um, Roland, sorry, can you yeah. can you zoom in a little bit? It's quite small, so if you zoom in, zoom in, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay thanks. Okay, thank you. Um, the development relevance what we've been talking about related to the sustainable development goals. What can the impact of the knowledge that you create be on people uh, in your home country? Um, this one is important. Uh, how will your research activities be funded? Because this is a scholarship for your time and mostly for your time in Belgium, and it doesn't have its own uh, research funding. If you need to do field work, uh, all these things, you need to think about it in advance. And I would suggest to think about it together with your uh, promoter. Um, how will we be able to do this? How will we be able to fund this? Showing here that you already thought about it and have a plan makes your proposal uh, a lot stronger. Okay. Um, that's uh, that's the, the research proposal. Um, yeah, I'm back in the presentation, and then a personal motivation letter. Have a quick look at that. Um, again, uh, something about uh, the development 
problem that you're working on, um, why it's relevant again, um, how your research can be applied. That's not necessarily your responsibility during the research, but it would be very interesting if you have a view on afterwards, how can it uh, make sense for society? What is your personal motivation? Um, and any plans? How do you see your future after uh, the scholarship? How will, it, how will it influence your professional career? Okay, um, and then your uh, relation with your home institution. This, um, this is three pages. Okay, then this proof of affiliation to the home university um, and a copy of the contract, if it is there, if you have that. It can also be a letter of intent. There are always there are more details always on the on the web page. And as I also said before, you can always ask us if something is still not clear. Um, but just to give you an idea that this is what you will need. So also do talk to your home institution because you will need some support from them. And two recommendation letters. They're also uh, fixed formats. Um, you can download them here. And um, of course, they should not come from either your KU Leuven uh, supervisor or your home institution supervisor. All of this can be uploaded to an online form that is not yet available, but will appear in the coming weeks. You can already start working, which is absolutely the bulk of the work on um, on the documents that uh, that I'm sharing with you here and that you can see in more detail on the website. All right, so that's the application procedure. Um, I give you the opportunity to uh, ask any questions if there would be any uh, about this. It's of course the main work at this point. Uh, the, um... Hassan Ibrahim has a question. Okay. Thank you, Roman. Uh, my Please. concern is uh, about the proof of affiliation. Like uh, uh, the document that will be uh, submitted by the local supervisor, is it is it is it not enough for the application to to well, prove that you are affiliated to the institution? Um, you the document that uh, which document do you mean that the local supervisor I mean, sends? I mean, I mean, I mean, the local supervisor will like sub will send his. Uh, CV like uh, right for instance his CV yeah to show that like he is the one who will be working with you during your scholarship yeah no so that's not enough like okay that's not enough but the, the point is of course that you can demonstrate that um that during the scholarship during the periods that you are at your home university you will be um uh, a salary member of staff um, and that uh, that you also get the time to work on your research while you're at the home institution so it goes uh, it goes way beyond uh, uh, um, the involvement of the local supervisor yeah maybe I can add something Roland so yeah if you don't have this yet the question was also posed in the chat then and that's not easy, I think, but it gives us a little bit of a guarantee that if you are selected and you have to sign a contract, it will be signed with the institution to which you are affiliated. So if you are not yet affiliated to one, you should try to get a commitment from that institution, perhaps via your co-promoter, um, in which the institution says, provided that this candidate will be selected, we will uh, offer him um, a, a position, a staff position as a researcher or in any other uh, form, but capable of executing that research. So that's already, that letter of intent is also already some kind of a commitment. Um, I'm not sure if that answers your question, but just having a, a co-promoter uh, being uh, uh, in support of your project, that's really not, uh, not sufficient. All right, thanks. Okay, thank you, Lawrence. Um, then I will go to the selection criteria and procedure, and Lawrence, then I give the floor to you again. 
Okay, thank you, Roland. So um, at KU Leuven, we have a council. It's called the Interfaculty Council on Global Development. And in that council, there are 16 faculties represented, each one of them uh, uh, through a professor. And then there are also vice rectors involved and staff members like Roland, myself, and other people. And it's this council that uh, creates a committee that will select uh, the candidates. So the first two criteria that you see here um, will have been treated already by the doctoral commission of the faculty to which you have applied. So that's about the quality of you as a young researcher. Uh, there are sub criteria. Do you know the methods? Are you aware of the state of the art of the problem? Do you have the necessary uh, uh, skills uh, within your discipline? Um, and and that that's something that the committee uh, of the of the faculty will will uh, judge on. And then same for the, the quality of the research proposal, the academic quality. And uh, do you have a clear research plan? Did you formulate your question well? Um, do you have a good grasp of the materials and the methods? Uh, okay, so these are equally um, balanced uh, criteria. And then. If you have been admitted, as Roland has explained, you have been admitted to the doctoral training, to the doctoral program. In that second phase, you can now apply for the scholarship. And then we look at criteria three and four, also an equal percentage. The first one, Roland has already hinted at it. Your problem um, needs not just to be an interesting scientific challenge, but it needs to have relevance for uh, the local community, the country as a whole, um, and it has to lead to some potential impact on that problem and, and on that local community. So development relevance is a broad concept. Um, you can either demonstrate that you will uh, work towards solutions or that your research can lead to solutions, but it can also mean that you uh, develop better insights into that probe problem so that you perhaps don't immediately have an impact or a clear uptake of that knowledge by stakeholders, but that you at least get to know the problem better. And it's always good to refer to the sustainable development goals, which are an overarching, let's say, uh, framework. And then the final criteria, and that's again where we come to this idea that, yeah, you need to be affiliated, well embedded into a local institution, because the, the, the finality of the scholarship is really that you as a young researcher can strengthen your home institution within your discipline, that you can create a network, that you can become a good teacher and researcher so to help another generation of younger people uh, go forward with qualitative research and education um, and so that that's why we also stress that the potential for local capacity building it's not your own individual capacity that is strengthened that you can do with any other program but here we also want to um, have you strengthen your home institution so the joint selection committee i see that there is a little error here i'm sorry roland so it's composed of um, two members of that interfaculty council of each a science group, so the humanities, science and technology group, and then the biomedical sciences. So your proposal will be read by a diversity of perspectives and, and disciplines. And then in this special case of the Global Mind Scholarship, uh, we also have all the directors of our three doctoral schools involved. So they have a very broad view on what is needed for such a project. And the three um, research coordinators of the group. So you see um, these are heavyweights in our institution, uh, but it also means that you have many different uh, disciplines that can look at it and really um, have, a, have an objective view on what is development relevant and what is impact. Because for a medical doctor, that could be defined very different uh, than for a literature professor. So that, that's useful to have such a broad committee. I think that that's the mainstay, Roland, but if there are questions, uh, always welcome. Back to you. OK, thank you. Um, and I think, yeah, also important to know. So in case you are granted the scholarship, 
uh, what is included and later on what is not. Um, I've put this little asterisk here because the PZ scholarship, that's the, let's say, um, the four year contract, the 24 months in Belgium. But it's possible that the doctoral committee um, expects you to um, do a pre-doctoral period. That means that's a kind of preparation. Also, sometimes a bit of a test um, for the real PST scholarship. And then this is also something uh, that the program can fund, but that will look differently. So that's not the same as what I'm explaining now. Um, but you can find details again on the website. It may not be that relevant for everybody, just to be complete. So what is involved? As I said, you receive a salary when you are in Belgium that is equivalent to the net salary of a KU Leuven assistant, any other KU Leuven assistant. So a minimum of 2,400 euros a month. Um, it is difficult to say this specifically because it is adapted to um, many uh, different factors, but let's say that you can really start from that assumption. Um, the four return tickets, um, so you can have at least four stays in Belgium uh, that are reimbursed from the program. And then your supervisors, that means if you are working at your home institution, then it is your home supervisor if you're working uh, in Belgium it's your Belgian supervisor that will receive 310 euros a month uh, for supervising you to be spent on let's say the successful completion of the PC so you can use it uh, anyway is uh, best um, and there's also a tuition fee waiver so normally uh, when you do a PC you pay tuition fee at the beginning and at the end but this is waived for uh, for global minds PCs then I think very important also to know what is not included. Um, as we said before, when you're at your home institution, your, your salary should be paid by uh, the home institution. And there's uh, no scholarship from uh, the Global Minds PCs. Um, a research cost budget is not foreseen. So you do have the supervision allowances. Um, that do constitute uh, a modest research budget if you pull it together, if you use it well. Um, but depending on the type of research you do, that, that may not be enough. And it's good to think about how to deal with this. Um, there are no family allowances also because in these sandwich PhDs, it's often it takes more time to arrange for your family to join you here than to actually um, than the time that you actually spend here. Um, so this is not foreseen and it is something to think about. But bringing your family in a sandwich PC is very often not not feasible. Um, it's not impossible that you organize your uh, stay in such a way that you spend a longer time in Belgium and then maybe it would be possible and some people do it, um, but then there are no specific allowances foreseen for that. Okay, And there is no separate accommodation allowance in the sense that we will help you find um, uh, accommodation, student accommodation, which is, um, let's say it is a, a very good price, um, but you have to pay it with your with your salary, the rent, paying the rent, um, and you don't have to take it. I mean, if you're not comfortable in, in this uh, type of accommodation, you can always look for a place on the private, uh, on the private market and uh, rent it. That's the same. But so it's not added to the scholarship. All right. Um, is that very clear? Um, there are no questions about that? Or if there are, I think uh, the next part is about um, the question. Just so, just some very general tips. Um, there is a lot of instructions, a lot of regulations, guidelines. But I would really advise you to try and read them carefully. And if something is not clear, don't hesitate eh, to ask to ask us. Uh, I think you have my contact, you have Laurence's contact, and we can help you. Um, discuss with the KU Leuven supervisor, talk about this, uh, everything you learn here, 
uh, any kind of uh, worries or questions, but also talk to your home institution because you need their support. You will need their signature. Um, they will uh, receive the supervision allowance for your supervisor and they will need to uh, process it and make sure it is available for your supervisor. So try to make them understand what the scholarship is about. Start now if you haven't started yet, definitely. Um, it's necessary, especially for this first step in the application. Uh, admittance to the doctoral training. Um, and as I said before, if you've heard all this and you think, oh no, this is not feasible or I didn't find a promoter yet or any kind of, you can also start working towards next year's call. OK, um, that's for the presentation. I think I saw some hands. I will uh, go back into the Teams meeting and um, please go ahead. Octavia, I think you were first. Please. You are muted. Oh, sorry, yes, I am okay. muted. <laughs> Hello. Um, Hello. I'd like to ask, uh, one of the criteria uh, said something about not having a Rijkskaart or a Verblijfstitel in Belgium. Um, how serious is that as uh, one of the points of, of eligibility? That, so I've, for example, I've never worked here, but I am living here because my husband works here as another South African. Is that yeah. very, very serious? As I was wondering if, um, I mean, it's not to say that I will always have the card. It is quite fickle. No, so I mean, if um, maybe Liz can, can uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but if you haven't worked here um, and what you have is a residence permit linked to your to your passport yes to my partner to your partner uh that should not be an eligibility issue and if it is then 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 Liz uh, should correct me but I, I i don't think so no there's no reason yeah. why it would be you don't have to divorce right. your partner to be able to apply for this uh, <laughs> he wouldn't to get the, okay priorities no, no. thanks yeah <laughs> yeah well i'm just thinking um so if we would be traveling from south africa to belgium and yes. we would need to apply for a DGD attestation for you, so meaning that you're exempt of the visa cost. Then we would have to use your South African nationality, of course, to yes. um, request um, the DGD attestation, and you would have to request um, a, a, a visa based on your South African nationality. And then enter the country with that visa in my South African passport. Yes, yes, but yeah, of, of course, you're now here. So mm -hmm. that step would not be necessary, but that is one of the implications of working with Flir West funding that um, the okay. DDT attestation for traveling has to be requested on the nationality of the Flir West country. Yes, yes, and that, that's the only nationality I have, so that okay. seems to work. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Um, Ibrahim? Hello. Thank Hello. you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for the, for the presentation. Uh, sorry, I was cut off from the chat because I had some network issue. I did not. I don't know if you have talked about uh, the English requirement, like any tests like uh, TOEFL or something like this. So is yeah. it compulsory to have? Is it compulsory to have like a, a TOEFL test or ITLs? I don't know. Yeah, so I, I think it's good you find it in more detail on the website. So yes, you need to, in one way or another, provide, let's say, proof that you can work uh, in English. Um, but maybe Lawrence can say a bit more. It also happens that the promoter um, writes actually documents saying, OK, we have discussed, uh, I've seen his or her work, and I can attest for uh, his or her English proficiency. So there are different ways to deal with it. But maybe Lawrence, do you want to add something to that? But it's basically um, an unwritten thing, yeah. So if it's really a problem to to have a, a two floor and ILTS uh, test, um, but your promoter is confident in your uh, linguistic skills, then uh, uh, the, he can waive uh, 
uh, that requirement uh, with a letter and send it to the admission service. There was another question about whether you can actually write a PhD in French and also there. Obviously, KU Leuven is very Anglophone in its research. And uh, so most of the work happens in English. But if the promoter is in agreement and the doctoral committee also, then uh, you can you can do that. There are some PhD theses uh, that have been written in other academic languages, but it's very exceptional. Roland, am I freezing yep. or are you freezing? Uh, I don't feel freezing. Um, <laughs> and I don't see you either. Uh, I think we're fine. Um, I don't see any other hands raised at this point. Uh, does that mean that everything is extremely clear? Um, I was wondering, but maybe it's different, difficult to say now, if there are many people here that haven't found a promoter yet. Maybe if you can write that in the chat, um, if you haven't found somebody yet, uh, that would be interesting for us to know. Uh, Chiara, yeah, please. Yes, um, thank you. Uh, regarding the pre-doctoral program, uh, um, an additional uh, question, even if uh, you have already replied uh, in the chat, um, is uh, the program part, uh, because uh, this will be, for example, four additional months, uh, four months in addition to the 48 months of the scholarship. Um, so is are these four months covered? Yes, yes, that's the point. Yes, they are. Yeah, okay. but as I said, it's a different type of scholarship. So um, it's it's, it's a, yeah different modality, uh, but it is covered. Yeah. Okay. It should be six months, right? Instead of four. Yeah, it depends a bit. Uh, 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 yeah, sorry. You, I, maybe I'm... Yeah. Depends, okay. yeah. There are some shorter ones. Depends. Sometimes it's only one or two real uh, courses or elements that you have to deepen. Eh? But uh, we foresee at least uh, a, a genuine pre doc of, of six months if necessary. There was a question perhaps for Elise um, about um, an accommodation allowance. What that means? What is that? So that um, accommodation will not um, be reimbursed to the student on top of the scholarship. So allowance has to be paid from the scholarship. Yeah. Um, I can also see that one, two, three, four, five people have said I haven't got a promoter yet. I haven't yet found a promoter. Again, someone else who is saying that. So then what you should do, as Roland explained, is send a CV or first check our um, research portal. And then you will see many topics of interest to you that can be aligned to your project. The promoter of these topics, you should contact him, send a CV and an outline of your research proposal. And then um, you can see whether he's interested in becoming your, your supervisor. If that is not really working, you can send your CV and the outline to me and I will try to see uh, if I can help. But we encourage you to do that yourself because you are a specialist in your domain and discipline. So you should yep. bounce by the research portal. Yeah. And I think it's also fair to say that it's late now for this call um, to find a promoter that you don't know yet um that will still find it feasible to do all this before 22nd of february so perhaps um it is something then to work on for the next call but you can try it definitely um but maybe fair to say that um i see jonas you have raised your hand for a while please oh, yes i did thank you for the uh, orientation uh, you have I think you just fell away. Or is it only me? Mm. 
while waiting for Jonas to come back. Oh, okay. So, Mar okay, yeah, turn it to break down, I guess. Okay. Can okay, you ask the question again? Perfect. Yeah, I am. Uh, I have some question regarding the language proficiency. I have. Uh, I have studied uh, my master and advanced master in K11. Will it be a, a passing mark for the language proficiency already? Yeah, I don't know if it's automatic, but um, I, I think it should be it should be fine. Um, but again, your promoter can uh, um, can write a document saying that it is enough. If you want, maybe this is a question we can also ask the admission. Uh, the admissions office, if that would automatically um, yes, from, be enough. Yeah. Yes. From my experience, uh, a master's degree at, at KU Leuven usually uh, suffices, and then your application okay. will not be withheld because of that. Thank right. you. Of okay. course, I will, I, I will ask as well my promoter. But thank you for, for your information. OK, great. Thanks. Thank um, we'll see, we quickly. Chat. Uh, reply to the question of Mareta uh, because mm -hmm. it's complicated to write it down. So the, the pre-doctoral program eh, um, really has to do with your skills as a young researcher. It means, okay, we trust that you're, you're, uh, you will be doing fine, but there are some elements that you need to deepen before really starting the PhD, right? And it's the doctoral committee. So in the first step of your application, the doctoral committee will judge on that. They will decide whether you as a candidate can go directly to the doctoral training and the PhD program, or that you need some top up on some specific um, uh, fields of knowledge through this doctoral, uh, pre doctoral program. Um, and you can see that on the website, this Global Minds PhD scholarship program provides six months maximum uh, that we can support you on that. So that that's covered. Um, so you will you will see that when you get news from the admissions service, you will receive a letter in which it says yes, you are admitted to either the doctoral program right away or the pre-doctoral. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. So. Yeah. Yeah, just to I'll, I'll be very brief. Eh? So for those who already have been admitted to the pre-doctoral program previously in 2022, for example, for this question, you don't need to go back to the registration. Um, did you finish the pre-doctoral program? That's another question, eh? but you have been admitted. So that's the first step. Uh, so you don't need to get the admission again. Yeah, I'm answering yeah. in the chat. One other question that I saw was about when the um, Doctoral committee convenes. Well, these are uh, committees per faculty, so you should actually ask your promoter uh, to hear if um, if they if they know if they can find out, and then um, uh, I think your file needs to be uploaded in time for it to be processed and sent on to uh, the doctoral committee for their meeting. Um, but this, so this, we can't we can't say when they convene. It depends on the faculty that you will work in. Um, I see another hand from Doa. Uh, yes, Doa. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for hello. your effort. I, I just want to ask, uh, do you hear me well? Yes. Yes. Um, if I was applying for, for, for uh, this type of scholarship for uh, people of uh, South, some, 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 something like this, and I was accepted for pre doctoral admission, and I have the email, it was 2019. Okay, does that mean that I don't I don't need to readmit again for the pre doctoral or doctoral part? I don't know. I'm not sure, Lawrence. Do you know? No. Once you have been admitted to either program, pre doc or doctoral, you don't need yeah. to go through. You don't need to go through that process again. The doctoral committee, oh. committee of the faculty has seen your file. And they have said, mm -hmm. OK, we can proceed with you. You have been admitted to our program. Except yes, if it's uh, been many, many years, then you should renew it, perhaps. But uh, if it's a recent no. admission, no need to, to do that again. 
Okay, but, but because uh, after that, I, I came with a scholarship fund, funded from my country, and I was uh, on the international scholarship program, but not the doctoral program. Is it a big difference in between or it's something else? Not sure if I understand your question. So you had been admitted to a pre-doctoral program? Yes. I, 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 well, okay, I was accepted in the first batch as uh, admission for the re re doctor. Then I, I didn't was accepted in the final batch, okay? Then I came to Lewin uh, uh, as an international scholar, as an international scholar program, okay? I have been like one and three months, uh, not 18 months, but one, uh, one year and this, uh, three months, okay? Not 18 months. Then I go back to my country. Then now, is that will be a problem to be admitted for this scholarship? No, it will not. Eh? But the, the question is, if you have been admitted to a pre-doc, pre-doctoral program, did you, and you did that with a, an international scholarship program, like you say, did you then terminate that pre-doctoral program? No, no, did it you, was a did you follow the program. training? No, no, I didn't, accept it. I, I didn't accept it for, you know, first they admit you, then in the second batch in May, they release the result, okay? In the result, in May, the, I wasn't uh, from the people who took the, uh, the scholarship. So, because I was keen to come, so I tried in another way. So I get fund from uh, my country, okay, to come for this, uh, that year, okay? And I was admitted at that time as international scholar program. Funded by myself and my country. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, if the purpose of that, what was the purpose of that stay here? As, uh, uh, yes. It was a research yeah. part for my uh, uh, doctoral degree, but it's clinical MD and not a PhD. Okay, so I think this is this is a rather complicated question. So I suggest that we contact you by mail and explore further whether you either need to re-register or reapply for admission, or that you can continue with your previous admission. Okay, okay? so I just uh, yes yes, and maybe it's better to so I can explain and I can document my talk. Okay. Yeah, that will be easier for for everybody. Thanks. Okay, thanks. Uh, sorry for a uh, more complicated question. No, that's okay. the purpose. Sorry. Sorry. No, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, yeah, I see a question in the chat. Um, first about expenses for research. I think we mentioned it in the presentation. There is no budget specifically for research costs in the scholarship, uh, apart from the supervision allowance that is limited. Um, so it's good to take that into account and then uh, about uh, insurance fees and and, um, and affiliation with the health insurance. Uh, thank you, Lise. That's also one of the one of the points that you will need to, to take care of. And it is something that you will cover yourself with indeed with your with your own salary um, as as we all do, actually. Um, you, I see the question that we have sent our files to our university. Uh, uh, I don't know if I understand the question right. Our university, you mean at Leuven? Paul, oh. maybe you can explain. Yeah. Yes. Uh... Can you hear what I'm saying? Yes, yes, I'm yes. Saying? Okay, what I was asking is that we have already sent our files for this position, and uh, I don't know if it's uh, important to apply again, because uh, the university asked us to, to send our files for the scholarship, and we have already done it. So I don't know if it's important to do it again or not. Where, where did you send them to, Paul? Um, uh, we have like a, a kind of cooperation, a, a, a system of cooperation at the university, and uh, the the supervisor asked us to ask to send it. And uh, I've even already sent my file to Lawrence, I think, uh, by the the professor Adi. Uh, I don't know if uh, it's uh, important to do it again. No, 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 no. If it's from Hadi, uh, I know the the file, so. 
the, the question is now whether you already have a, a supervisor or that that you want us to help with that. Uh, I mean, I mean a KU Leuven supervisor. Ah, uh, okay. No, uh, I have a local sub supervisor, but for a KU Leuven supervisor, I, I started the process, but uh, I think I'm waiting for, for the answer. Okay, yes, so I, I think I, I need a, I, I need a, 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 I will need your help, I think. Yeah, we, if you have not yet uh, started looking for a supervisor, then, then you should start right away because we have very limited time and we can help with that. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, uh, Doha, is, is that a new hand or an old hand? I'm not sure. Uh, Otherwise, if there are no more questions, uh, you see a lot of information. Sorry, it, it, and it is old, Brian. It is old. It is old, yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> Great. I will, I will, okay, no. Okay. So I will share the PowerPoint. Uh, again, the link also to the website where you can find everything and uh, a recording of the session, both for you, but I think mostly for uh, the many people that registered and were not here today. Um, and then, of course, we stay available to to help you and your promoters in applying and eh? we look forward to your applications. Um, so thank you, everybody. Uh, thank you also, Laurence and Lise for being here and um, we wish you all the best. Yep. Good luck. Good luck to everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. OK. Thank bye you bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. See you over. Thank you. Bye.